Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the CHAL Ireland State Chal Chats, Dongster Rovers. Uh, quite a lot coming in this video. We're going to be talking about Conor Carty. Looks like he's set to sign for Dongster Rovers on loan from Bolton. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Comment down below. Also, we're going to be talking about will Jay McGrath follow? Because it sounds like the two that have been training with us this week uh, are Conor Carty and Jay McGrath. Um, we're also going to be previewing the upcoming trip to Mansfield tonight. Uh, I won't be there, unfortunately, but I will be watching from home. So uh, there won't be a watch on, unfortunately, but uh, I will be watching from home and delivering some stuff on TikTok. The link to my TikTok and all the other social medias will be in the description down below. Uh, there'll be a halftime and a full-time report as well as a lineup report uh, from the Mansfield game on TikTok and Instagram. So stay tuned for that. I'll post the links on Twitter as well for that one. Uh, so you can check it out on all different platforms. Uh, but let's get started with this one then. Let's first of all speak about Connor Carter. Right. I've seen some stuff on We Scout, uh, Transfer Market, some stats about him um, to deliver a bit, a bit of a better report and uh, to, to process my thoughts on it. Uh, so first of all, the story itself, the story is that Connor Carter has returned for, from St. Pat's in the Irish Premiership uh, to the Bolton B team. And the story is that he's set to be loaned out to Doncaster Rovers for the rest of the season some regular first team action um to put you in perspective he scored five goals and one assist uh, with 30 plus irish premier league games um Conor Carty's 21 years old he's irish um former under 21s irish international as well scored a couple of goals at the 21 level um in the recent few months um and the general consensus from the Bolton fans is that he is rated to a high extent, uh, could be near the first team at some point. Um, it seems like the general consensus around this loan deal is that he'll be assessed in the summer with a year left on his contract to see where he is. It's From my perspective, even though there's a year left on his contract by the summer uh, in six months, um, it feels like a very loan to buy kind of scenario where if he's happy at Rovers and he's doing well at Rovers and Bolton don't see a pathway for him if but especially I think it warrants on if Bolton go up as well I think if Bolton go up and don't see a pathway for him in the first team currently I think they might let, end up letting him go uh with a year left but that could just be my personal opinion um it depends if it all goes well if it doesn't go well for him at Doncaster we shouldn't be looking at a permanent deal in my opinion I think we have to move on if it doesn't work out um I know a lot of Rovers fans have not been happy about this news uh they think oh it's another young kid it's you know another youngster that's you know not got many minutes in in the Bolton squad and things like that and you know, I I, I, I get the anger I, I do get it because you don't want to be in that scenario again where you don't want to be in another Tiago Chakur situation where it's a kid with high potential at a club higher up that's been loaned out or, or as part of their academy comes to League Two and flops you, you, or comes to League One and flops. You, you don't want that scenario again. You really, really don't. What I get from Conor Carty is he's a pressing forward. He's um, He knows how to find the net. He's a finisher. He's not technically the most prolific, technically, but he is a bit of a finisher. He knows where the net is. Um, it's one of them. It's one of them where I generally don't know how this is going to go. I generally don't know how this is going to go. Um, I, I'm willing to give him a chance, um, but I I still think we need to be signing an experienced striker as well. I, th I think we need an, maybe another striker with a bit more experience, personally, anyway. Um and then it kind of moves on swiftly to Jay McGrath. He's obviously 20 years old, strong, physical, ball-playing defender, um, but still 20 years old and not a lot of uh, experience. And I think in our scenario, no matter whether you're six months into a rebuild or you're two years into a rebuild, being in 20th is not the position you want to be in. Um and I know, and I think, I think, I think, if I'm being generally brutally honest, I think some Rovers fans have been brought back down to earth with a bump, uh, with where we are in the table at the moment, and you know, and I see a lot of people talking about always, oh, you know, do you risk continuing with the man that you guys wanted to to, to take it forward? And I trust McCann a hundred percent. I am hundred percent McCannon, and I'll always be McCannon at the moment because. 
I know he can turn it around. You listen to his press conference. He knows what he needs to do to turn it around. And I'm going to use Carty and McGrath as an example. Carty works the majority on his own uh, in a four-back formation. McGrath has been in a four-back formation nearly all the time at St. Pat's. So these guys work in four-back formations. If McCann keeps choosing the five-back formation or the five-at-the-back defensive formation and they're involved in that, that's when you start to question what's happening. But this, these two signings are an example of McCann wanting to go to a four-back or, or work in, a, in an attacking three-back formation where they're not sat back, they're not too defensive, they've got attacking minds, etc. And the thing is about Jay McGrath, right, he's a physical, strong ball-playing defender, he's great in the air, um, he's great at the aerial duels, he wins defensive duels, he's got a lot of potential in him still. Um, and I think that both of these will improve the long-term core of the squad. I think obviously Carter for six months, but obviously if it becomes a permanent in the summer, then you never know. But I think with McGrath, I think he's part of that long-term core. Um, but I still feel we need league experience as well. And especially if you're going to look for defenders in the fields as well. I'll give you two names straight away. Elliot Watt, Jacob Bedell. Those are two names straight away. So you bring in Bedell, you bring in McGrath, you bring in Carty on loan, you bring in Elliot Watt. You bring in an attacking midfielder on loan or, or, or someone who can play on the wing on loan someone like a Harry Vaughan from Hull or an Amari Kellerman from Aston Villa with that that zest, that flair, um, that quality to kind of push us forward even more. And you're bringing in, um, you may be bringing a second strike with a bit more experience. So you have Carty, you have Fowl, you have Ironside, um, Goodman for like um, Bristol Street Motors Trophy, but I'd say Goodman goes out on loan at this point. Fowl, Ironside, Carty on loan, and then you bring in an experienced striker. Um, and, and I generally think that's the kind of window you you want to see. Um, just a bit more experience, and you know, you bring in a couple of youngsters, of course you do, but you bring in that experience as well, which I think McCann will do, unless proven wrong by the 1st of February. And I think that's the window we hope for. But then if it still if it still goes wrong, what do we do? So for me, I think January is going to be a crucial month. And I've said that for weeks now. Um, it's damage limitation up until the January window opens. Rumours and reports suggest that Carty could be available as soon as MK Dons on New Year's Day. But we'll, we won't know that until the announcement comes out. But uh, And if, if that was the case, then he would be announced before the game. Or he'd be announced the day before uh, the game uh, in terms of an agreement in place, etc. So that would be my general opinion on that. Um, finally, then, Mansfield Town coming up tonight, um, going away from home to a Mansfield side who's just five points away from the top of the league. <laughs> yeah, on paper, it's not great, especially with the last three games. But um, my hope for McCann is that he goes with the four-back system. I do not want to see that five-back system anymore. I, I think we just... With the players we've got, I think that I think with the with the um, injury report in the press conference yesterday, I think with Faulkner, I think being potentially fit and ready to go, with Flint being injured, with Anderson out again, with Olawu being the fitter of the two out of Olawu and Anderson, I look at that lineup and you think, right, Lawler in goal, back four of Senior and Sterry as your wing as your, as your fullbacks, because let's be honest, Sterry's a right back and. And Senior works better as a left-back or a left-centre-back. So I think Senior on the left-hand side. And I think Nixon maybe needs a rest. And then you go with um, Olawu and Faulkner uh, if, if, they're, if they're both fit to start. Um, I'd go with Bailey as the number six. If Olawu's not fit enough to start or if Faulkner's not fit enough to start, you put Bailey in the back line. You put Close as the holding midfielder. But I, I don't know if Close is... Uh, I think hopefully Close is fit anyway. Um, and then if if you're gonna put close in as the number six, you'd have Biggins and and Row as your as your midfield partnership in front. Uh, if Bailey's in the number six role, you put Close and Row in there. I think Biggins should be on the bench for me. And then on the wing, Hurst and Molyneux has to be Hurst and Molyneux, and then Ironside up front. 
that's how I would do the four three three in my in my in my personal opinion. Um, but yeah, I, that's how I would line up against Mansfield tonight. I, I don't know if he's going to go with the five back system or not. I don't think we've got the players anymore to do five back. We've got to go to four back um, and and play that way and see what we do with that formation change. Uh, if it's still not working, you make changes. If you make changes and it still don't work, that's the quality of Mansfield squad. <laughs> Um, because I, I, I generally, in my heart of heart, don't think we're going to win this game. If I see 110% from the players tonight and we get a point out of it or we just lose the game, then fair enough. We've made improvements. We've learned lessons from the past three weeks. But if we go out there with the same way we played against Notts County, the same way we played against Bradford, and the same way we played against Morecambe, we get absolutely pummeled. We've learned nothing. And it's literally, like I said, just damage limitation. Um so, yeah, so it's a big game tonight. And uh, like I said, I'm not going in there predicting a win at all. Like I said, I think I'd, I'd take a draw at this point. Um, I'd take a 1 0 loss at this point because I generally don't know where our next win's going to come from. Because you've got MK Dons on New Year's Day. And if we set up the same way we set up against Notts County, Mike Williamson will play rings round us. Like it'll be Lord of the Rings all over again, just absolute rings for days. And then you've got Harrogate away. And we lost that last season at Harrogate away on the, in last season. So Harrogate will not be a walkover. They're 12th right now. So they will not be a walkover. Um, so, yeah, big few games coming up for Rovers heading into that January window. And it's such a crucial window as well. Uh, but there we go, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching this video. We're back on TikTok with lineup report, halftime report, full time report from the Mansfield game. Links to that will be shared on Twitter. Uh, before, during, and after. Links will be, uh, there'll be clip on Instagram as well, so check that out as well. Uh, but for now, guys, I am the C H A L L. Turn off for now.